Fossil fuel powered cars might slowly be becoming a thing of the past as more and more EVs and FCEVs hit the market. These vehicles, powered by electricity and hydrogen, are ideal for the environment. Their carbon footprint is close to nothing, and they're slowly being designed to cover more and more distance in one single run. But the question is, which of these cars is the future? At first glance, it appears like FC EVs have a clear advantage over regular EVs in terms of their lifetime carbon footprint. Instead of using a battery, which is the conventional method for producing power, FC EVs generate it by injecting hydrogen into the fuel cells of the vehicle. There are no harmful emissions generated because the byproduct of turning hydrogen into power is water. But hold on a second. Hydrogen as a gas is quite uncommon on our planet, hence it's often necessary to produce it, and the method can leave a sensitive carbon footprint. For example, steam reforming is the method used to produce this so-called grey hydrogen gas, but to produce this gas you need to use fossil fuels, which can lead to a considerable rise in the total carbon emissions generated during the vehicle's fueling process. On the other hand, electrolysis using renewable energy sources produces green hydrogen. The hydrogen atoms extracted from water molecules through electrolysis power the fuel cells. Just like hydrogen cars, an electric car's lifetime carbon footprint also depends on the source of energy. Batteries are the lifeblood of EVs, but not all batteries are created equal. So, carbon emissions depend critically on the materials used to make them. In the majority of EVs, lithium batteries are used, which are completely emission-free. But there are a lot of materials needed for lithium-ion batteries, and acquiring them can emit large amounts of carbon, ultimately increasing the EV's carbon footprint during its lifespan. Since the total production of hydrogen and electric vehicles is highly dependent on the sourcing of their respective ingredients, there's no obvious winner in the race to reduce the lifetime carbon footprint. This is FCEV's major drawback. They lack the efficiency that EVs can provide. Fuel cell electric vehicles typically have an efficiency of only around 60%. This means that out of every 100 watts of energy produced, only about 60 watts can be utilized to power the vehicle. However, the energy efficiency of battery-powered electric vehicles is significantly higher than that of FCEVs. The energy efficiency of most vehicles, including electric automobiles powered by batteries, is approximately 80%. That's a lot more than FCEVs. This translates to a power consumption of approximately 80 watts per 100 watts of output. But don't hand the winner's trophy to the EVs just yet, because from here, things start to get difficult for them. When comparing FCEVs to EVs, the main differences in terms of infrastructure are the main points of refueling and charging. The bulk of zero-carbon vehicles are electric vehicles that run on batteries. Thus, there's a strong push to build more charging stations to accommodate the soaring demand. Innovations to prolong battery life and accelerate battery charging are also producing EVs that can drive several hundred kilometers on a single charge. In addition, the amount of time it takes to charge an electric automobile is getting much shorter. Today's models can get up to 80% capacity in around 30 to 60 minutes. For electric vehicle owners residing in single-family homes, where personal EV chargers can be installed, home charging stations are becoming as common as the increasingly, though still sparsely distributed, availability of public charging stations. However, FCEV refueling stations are even harder to come by. Both the public's unfamiliarity with FCEV technology and the limited availability of FCEVs on the market contribute to this. On the other hand, when these stations are accessible, FCEVs are the way to go due to their impressive refueling speed, which is more or less under 40 minutes, and driving range of around 300 miles on a single tank. The convenience and ease of refueling and charging are two other areas where battery-powered EVs have a leg up on FCEVs, but due to the time required to refuel and the driving range, FCEVs aren't lagging either. And it's just a matter of time before FCEV refueling stations become as common as EVs. Standard battery-powered EVs, especially those using lithium-ion batteries, have a number of drawbacks, the most notable of which being production and disposal concerns. 
For example, producing lithium batteries can lead to significant environmental harm and emit up to 16 tons of carbon dioxide. Furthermore, there's a significant threat of environmental pollution associated with the disposal of expendable EV batteries, as recycling rates are still below 5%. Current yearly production of electric vehicle batteries will be approximately equivalent to the amount of batteries that will need disposal by 2030, according to recent projections. And it's not like they can stop producing batteries and keep using the ones they already have. Batteries degrade over time, and when an electric vehicle's battery ages, it loses some of its capacity to store energy, reducing the vehicle's range. You may lessen the impact of degradation by avoiding fast chargers, limiting exposure to severe temperatures, and keeping the charge between 60 and 80 percent, but still it is bound to happen. And with the severe range anxiety that already exists regarding EVs, this puts the vehicle in a bad position. On the other hand, hydrogen and fuel cells for FC EVs produce relatively little carbon dioxide when made using green technologies like electrolysis. In addition, fuel cells are long-lasting and usually endure the whole vehicle's lifespan, which greatly decreases disposal-related concerns. Sounds perfect, right? But there's more to it. Both hydrogen fuel cells and high-pressure hydrogen storage tanks are costly to produce because they use rare and valuable metals. Hydrogen Insight found in September 2023 that compared to a similar Tesla EV, the cost of operating a Toyota hydrogen car in California is 14 times higher. Even though hydrogen is abundantly available, extracting it from water is an expensive endeavor and not very environmentally friendly, as we have discussed. Both the hydrogen vehicle and electric vehicle markets are booming, with 17,953 and 2,442,270 AFVs respectively on American roads. Sales of electric vehicles are expected to reach around 27 million in 2026, according to predictions. During the same time frame, analysts predict that the worldwide market for hydrogen cars will reach $42.04 billion. Thanks to progressive policies and valuable incentives, the United States boasts one of the world's fastest growing economies. One example is the bipartisan infrastructure law, which, if passed, would allocate $7.5 billion to increase the number of electric vehicle charging stations around the country. Many people who purchase electric vehicles are eligible for a tax credit of up to $7,500, and automakers have a lot to gain by speeding up EV manufacturing. The government's focus on hydrogen-powered vehicles has been historically low, but that is expected to alter in the near future. So, for instance, between Houston and Los Angeles and throughout the Midwest Corridor, the Department of Energy is providing funding to help hydrogen refueling stations become built. Also, low-income and rural areas can get credit of up to $100,000 for AFV refueling property, according to the Inflation Reduction Act. A quarter of American adults expressed a strong or moderate likelihood of purchasing a completely electric vehicle the next time they're shopping for a new or used car, and about 41% of responders to a Bosch survey think that hydrogen fuel cell tech is the most important factor in promoting sustainability. However, consumers are worried about the high initial cost, the absence of a refueling infrastructure, and the difficulties associated with hydrogen storage and production when it comes to hydrogen cars, whereas limited access to charging stations, expensive battery replacement costs, and range anxiety are the main obstacles to broader EV adoption. To lower the transportation sector's carbon footprint significantly, it is environmentally sensitive to replace gasoline-powered cars with cleaner and greener AFVs. However, there are a number of other important considerations that will determine the future of electric and hydrogen vehicles, such as initial and continuing expenses, charging and refueling infrastructure, driving range, model availability, and methods of producing power. The increased demand for electric automobiles can be attributed to the rapid developments in battery technology. These advancements are enhancing the driving range and reducing upfront expenses. Significant expenditure on charging infrastructure is also encouraging. In addition to the difficulties in producing, transporting, and storing hydrogen, the widespread adoption of hydrogen cars would necessitate a massive renovation of the country's infrastructure. Hydrogen vehicles are attractive to environmentally concerned buyers due, in part, to their significantly shorter recharge times compared to electric models. Hydrogen cars will have skyrocketing demand and growth as refueling infrastructure is established and product prices fall. 
Alternative fuel cars might hold the secret to Earth's survival, so it's more than just a trend. But there's a great deal of variety in car technology, with fuel cell electric vehicles and electric vehicles powered by batteries being the most cutting edge of environmentally friendly innovations. So, what do you think? Which vehicle will be the future of cars? Let us know in the comments below.